Good evening. Phil Lindemann, Crystal, 93 News. Boulders came tumbling down onto westbound I-70 at Central City Parkway this afternoon. And just as soon as they were down, they were gone. Traffic cams at 3.30 showed multiple boulders on the pavement. By 4, they were cleared up. No reports of injuries or damaged vehicles. Just one person came to county chambers today for a public hearing on two upcoming tax questions. The man wanted to know who will be affected by a 2% lodging tax on short-term rentals. Officials clarified it is for units in unincorporated summit only. This question and a mill levy extension were quickly approved. Both are now on the November ballot. Plowing at Copper Mountain this winter could be the latest victim of Summit's persistent workforce shortage. It does put us in a pretty awkward position, unfortunately. I just don't know how we respond to it fast enough to get ready for winter. That was a Copper Metro District official. All roads at Copper are technically county roads, but a contract from 2001 says the county will split maintenance with the resort and its Metro District. But that contract expires this year. Commissioner Elizabeth Lawrence. Attorneys need to figure that out so that this winter season we can make sure that Copper is plowed and maintained appropriately. Copper wants to extend the contract, saying they need at least one county plow and driver this winter. County staff said this might stretch them too thin, to which Commissioner Tamara Pogue replied, I believe the county bears some responsibility moving forward because these roads at the end of the day have to be plowed. They all agreed to reconvene, most likely with an extended contract, before October. Frisco wants Summit to split the cost of a $3 million property for local housing. But Commissioner Elizabeth Lawrence is getting cold feet. How can I tell our constituents in Summit County, like, well, we spent Summit County housing money on a project in town of Frisco that Frisco is just benefiting from? Commissioner Josh Blanchard sees it differently. I think it's important that we show collaboration um, with our larger housing goals. And so uh, where it stands now, I don't have any issues. Lawrence did concede, saying her opposition is philosophical and not enough to freeze the purchase. The county will split the cost with Frisco in hopes the town opens some of those units for locals living outside of town boundaries. A wildfire buffer project years in the making is finally underway at Ruby Ranch, where hand crews are doing all the cutting because there's no machinery allowed in the neighboring Eagle's Nest wilderness. Crystal correspondent Matt Renew of Nine News. It's a bit of a model project. I don't believe it's been done anywhere else in the country where they're able to mitigate out in the wilderness property. And so this could be something that we see other communities do. But I think a lot of these government agencies, these fire departments, see it as you do this ahead of time and it will save a lot of money down the road if there's ever a wildfire. And plus, it, it protects lives and property. That project should be finished by winter. Stopping by the Crystal Studio today was John Conway of Kansas, an avid listener with a story you have got to hear to believe. I contracted COVID on Halloween of 2020, got tested, came back positive, and by the end of the day, Nancy, my significant other, had to take me to the hospital, and the long story short, I uh, was intubated, uh, was in a coma for 15 days, and uh, got out a total of 32 days in the hospital. Nancy will always remember the night she knew John would pull through. I took his iPad up to the hospital and I taught the nurses how to tune into Crystal 93, which is a familiar station to him. I talked to the night nurse. He had said that John's blood pressure was really high and he said he noticed that the station was on country and I said, well, he hates country. You turn it back down and while I was on the phone with him, John's blood pressure came back down and we knew that he was in there. John admits he still has some breathing trouble, especially climbing the stairs up to our studio but he's otherwise 100%. He is one of just 3% of COVID patients, he says, who slipped into a coma and lived to tell the story. Local fire danger is low today, with no fire restrictions in Summit. In sports, the Rockies open a series with the Rangers today at 640. And in local sports, brought to you by Red Mountain Autos at their new location on Airport Road, today is opening day of Summit High Team sports season when boys soccer plays Battle Mountain at home. Tomorrow, volleyball is playing Conifer at home. Phil Lindemann, Crystal. 93 News.